Today we're going to cover exhaust raw water temperature sensors and why they can save a catastrophic failure on a diesel engine that cost you tens of thousands of dollars and for some crazy reason boat builders and OEMs that supply the engines to boat builders they don't include these things. So we'll talk about what they do, why you'd want to put them in, and how easy it is and cost effective. Join us on the Elliott as we realize our five-year plan with the kids. Grown up, moved out, graduated from college. We take the dog, sold everything, and kitted out the boat so we can cruise the Pacific Northwest all while living and working in the heart of Seattle. Most of my adult life, I've worked on gas engines. So when we first bought a boat that had twin diesels, I didn't know what I didn't know. When we talk about uh, catastrophic failures, something on a gas engine that you don't lose a lot of sleep on is overheating your engine. Uh, what I mean by that is you can have a stuck uh, thermostat, uh, it stops the coolant from flowing, or you have delayed maintenance. Generally speaking, your engine will overheat as long as you don't keep running it. You can fix that problem, and you can go on with your life. Uh, worst case scenario, what generally happens is you'll warp uh, a head, and you can solve that. It's painful, it costs you a couple thousand dollars. With a diesel engine, that is not the case. A single overheating incident can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. There's so much dependency on keeping a very narrow band of temperature in the engine that it's absolutely critical to keep an eye on that. So one might say, well, I have a temp sensor on my engine for the coolant and it has alarms, so I'm good. I'm not worried about that. Unfortunately, by the time your coolant overheats, your engine has overheated and damage has already been done. Now, what'll happen is generally speaking, there are things that can take place that are out of your control. Uh, you can have a plastic bag that sucks up against the raw water intake underneath the boat. Uh, you could also have a perfectly fine you know, impeller that you've done the right maintenance on, but it loses you know, one of its blades and clogs the system and you've got an issue with overheating as well. Now, there are some things that are completely in your control, like maintenance, uh, which most boat owners, because it's very expensive to go through and service the cooling system on a boat because it has multiple heat exchangers, which we'll kind of point out a little bit later, it can cost $15,000 uh, for two engines when you think about replacing hoses and doing that service as well. So a lot of people just don't do that service and can lead to an over temp situation as well. So there's a simple fix to this. And let's walk you through the engine, show you how the raw water cools the engine and how you can actually identify long before an engine ever overheats if there's a catastrophic failure with your cooling system. You can shut down that engine and you can save yourself tens of thousands of dollars. So to start with, let's take you through the journey of raw water in one of our diesel engines. Carlin right now is pointing to our raw water intake, which then leads to our raw water strainer, keeps the larger things that can clog up our system out. And then we have a hose that leads us back up to the water pump. And this is where the impeller sits and pressurizes the entire system, sucks in the water and pushes the water through the entire cooling system. That then leads us up to the oil cooler. The oil cooler is super important because on diesel engines, oil plays a huge role in actually cooling the engine. Our next stop along the line is our cold air charge. You kind of go back here and we have the heat exchanger. Heat exchanger is hiding out behind these oil filters, but that is where the raw water cools off the coolant in the engine as well. That takes us to our next stop, which is our transmission cooler. And then that takes us to the end of the road, which is the sprayer can. The exhaust temp on this particular engine at wide open throttle is spec for 640 degrees. Uh, when you take uh, the raw water that runs about 20 degrees warmer than the ambient temperature of, the, of the, the water that the boat is sitting in, it cools down that exhaust, it expels that raw water, taking care of two things all at once. So 
<laughs> that helps to make sure that we don't cook these rubber connectors as well as these fiberglass exhaust tubes. Uh, pretty cool, elegant setup. However, most of the manufacturers don't include this sensor, which is crazy because if you think about it, if anything gets clogged in this system and you're not spraying that raw water through here, because the exhaust temp is so much higher, this thing's gonna to go to 200 degrees almost instantly uh, when this gets clogged. Or if it's partially clogged, it'll go up over those temps you know, in a matter of moments. This is kind of the canary in the mine. It's gonna tell us first that we've got a problem with our cooling system long before the coolant or the engine overheats. So we can shut down this engine, we can go through and start looking at what the issues might be and get them solved long before there's ever catastrophic failure. These are cheap. We'll provide some links down below, but you can get sensors and gauges with alarms for you know, only a couple hundred bucks. It, it doesn't make any sense if they don't put them on. Also, one other thing that we've added to these engines is exhaust gas temperature sensors. These may not be as critical, but I love to have them. They tell me a lot about the engine. On Volvo, uh, there's a spec that says it's about 640 degrees after the turbo. So these sensors that I have sit right after the turbo and I can tell, does the engine have greater load than what it's designed for? So that could be due to things like just heavy seas, which are temporary and that's, those things take place. Or it could be due to things like the boat is overpropped or the boat is overloaded uh, on weight. And that means we are driving premature failure on the engine because we're overloading the engine for what it's specced for. Uh, there are also other things failing injectors or uh, rings that are starting to fail or any of those types of things what it'll do is it will start creating higher exhaust temperatures on the engine the other part that i love about having two engines is both of these engines on an exhaust temp are within five degrees of each other it's pretty amazing so that means if i have one engine that starts getting warmer i kind of have a baseline between the two engines to start being able to do some research and figure out where i might have upcoming failures of parts or any of those things but i can go through and start looking at diagnostics if you can keep ahead of being able to understand what the health and welfare of the engine is through its exhaust temps your money ahead these cost a couple three hundred dollars now there's a bit of a debate whether or not you should get your exhaust gas temp after the turbo or before the turbo personally i'd rather have it before the turbo uh, the turbo can drop the temperatures by 150 250 degrees so you're not really getting the true temp of the exhaust gases uh, from everything i've researched you really want to have it in the exhaust manifold because that tells you if anything's going wrong uh, on the exhaust side, whether you know, your cylinders are getting too hot, your valves are getting too hot, all things that you, you care about when you talk about premature wear as well as a failure on the engine that's coming at you. Uh, Cummins already has uh, provisions within their exhaust manifolds uh, to be able to do that before the turbo. We're up in the pilot house there's a ton of information that we receive, obviously from our multifunction displays on the axioms, as well as the what we call the steam <laughs> gauges. These gauges up here, we have obviously the coolant temp gauges. If those tell you that you're overheated, damage has already been done on, on the diesel engine. Uh, we could go with a analog type gauge and add them to the lineup up here but we decided to go with another solution that leverages our NEMA 2000 backbone that sends information all over the boat. It made sense to be able to leverage that network because we can also expand it to like our uh, freshwater tank, also our black water tank, which is analog. We can convert those in time over to the NEMA uh, backbone. So when we're away from the boat, there's a module we can add to this Maritron system that we selected that we can monitor all these things over the internet. This module is a DSM 410. It's not necessarily cheap. It's less than $500, but it also connects then into that the TMP 100 module that all of the sensors down in the engine room connect to that just runs over the NEMA network. It's pretty slick. What we've been able to do is configure this so that you can see 
a gauge for the port and the starboard engines. Uh, on the top we have the exhaust raw water temperatures and down below we have the exhaust gas temperatures. We'd love to hear your feedback of experiences that you've had on you know, any of these types of sensors, failures that you know, were catastrophic that this would have saved you from. Go ahead and put those down in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it.